Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. As we get into your word, Lord, open our hearts, open our eyes, open our ears to hear what the Spirit says to us today. Give us wisdom, Lord God, and teach us application on how to live out your word, not just to hear it, but how to walk it out today. In Jesus' almighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to throw a few scriptures at you. And then we're going to get into Job. There we go. And uh, you don't have to go here. Hold your place in Job. I'm going to read a few scriptures to you. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me, and I will answer you. Hallelujah. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Psalm 17, 6. Again, you guys don't have to go here. You're jumping around too much. Hold the place in Job. Psalm 17, 6 says, I have called upon you, but you will answer me, O God. Somebody say, you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, says the Lord. Hear my speech. Hosea chapter 2, verse 21. I'm already starting to feel it get stirred up again. It will come about in that day that I will respond, declares the Lord. Come on. I will respond to the heavens, and they will respond to the earth. Hallelujah. Is our faith there yet? I'm trying to get our faith there. How many know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God? Faith doesn't come by hearing and hearing Pastor Mike. Well, why would God do that? That sounds real harsh. I'm going to tell you why. Because he knows what you're made of. More than you do. He designed you to deal with the devil. So much so that in Genesis, he said, subdue the earth. That was one of the first assignments he came, he gave to man. Watch this. <laughs> oh boy, I feel the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Satan was in heaven. And the Bible says there was war in heaven. Now, at some point, I'm not going to go into the details. But at some point, Satan rose up against God. And a third of the angels came in warfare against God. And the Bible says there was war in heaven between Michael the archangel and the devil. Michael the archangel and his boys pretty much kicked the devil's butt. And Jesus said in the scripture, I beheld Satan as lightning falling down from heaven to the earth. Satan, so watch this. They threw Satan from heaven to the earth. Who did God send to answer Satan? He didn't send Michael. No, he didn't send an angel. He sent man. Satan was thrown to the earth. God created man and he said, all right now, deal with the devil. Deal with the devil. So, God has confidence in us. He's made us his, part of his answer through Jesus. Part of his answer to the darkness in this world. And we can see that right here in Job. So then Job, so then the enemy goes after Job. Now watch this. So the enemy goes after Job. And Job's life gets afflicted. His life is torn down. He loses his family. He loses his inheritance. He loses everything. Now keep in mind, this only happened for a matter of months. God allowed the test to come upon him. He allowed the test to come upon his men. Job. 
And so then Job loses everything. That's the second thing that happened the Lord showed me. The third thing that happened was people talked. Somebody say people talked. Okay, so there's the enemy, there's Job's life, and there's people. How many got something going on in their life right now? How many got people talking? People talk to me all the time. Why? We ain't you supposed to be a man of God? Why are all this stuff happening to you all the time? I've heard that all my life. Ever since I decided to go into ministry. Ain't you supposed to be a man? It ain't supposed to be this hard. If you was really a man of God, wouldn't God just bless you with this big old church and you just pop up out of nowhere and all of a sudden all your problems would disappear? No, it doesn't happen that way. Matter of fact, it happens the opposite. Somebody said there's a proving. There's a testing. No, it doesn't happen that way. Oh boy, I wish it did. Matter of fact, when I first got into this business, this kingdom of God business, I thought that's how it would happen. I remember I got back to Cleveland. I strapped on my Bible and my guitar and I went to the beach. And I thought God was going to raise up a mega church right there on the beach. We were going to have to find a building. We were going to have to scramble to find a building somewhere. And next thing you know, I'm Cruffalo Dollar, Cleveland. Oh, boy, I thought that's how it was going to happen. No, no, no. You know, I went to that beach and God showed me I was there for one person. And I ministered to tons of people. But he showed me I was there for one person, one man sitting at the edge of the beach at the end of the day by himself at the edge of the water. And I was leaving. I was on my way out. That's why God's timing is not, it's not, it's not, it's not according to your timing. Remember we talked about the woodcutters. Oh, I'm there trying to raise up a mega church. God, come on, bring all the people out here. Come on now. We're about to have a church out in here. Got my guitar playing. Right there on the beach. I said, no, I only sent you there for one person. As I was exiting, some of y'all heard this testimony. There was a, a young lady. She was having a photo shoot. And she was, you know, doing her poses. And they were taking pictures of her. And she was, you know, had a bikini on. And and, uh, and and I saw her, and the Lord said, look this way. And I looked that way, and I saw her, and I said, there's a crowd of people around her. And she was pretty, you know, she attracted a lot of attention. And they had cameras, and it was like for some famous magazine. And I looked down the way, and there was a, a guy at the edge of the beach. And uh, he was by himself, and he was so far away, all I could see was his shadow. And he was sitting in a chair. And it turned out to be a wheelchair that he was sitting in. And there she was, and there he was. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, Michael, do you see the state of the world? And in that moment, God showed me a, a parable. In a parable, the state of the world, he said, the world is attention is focused on the wrong thing. When my heart is for one thing. And so I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to go meet him. So I took my guitar and I was leaving. I was on my way out, but I took my guitar, put it back on my shoulder, and I started to walk towards the man. And as I walked towards the man, I got about halfway and I turned around. And in that moment, I realized the calling of my ministry. Because as I got halfway to the person sitting in the wheelchair, I stopped. I turned around and I said, if anybody wants to see a miracle from a miracle of God, follow me. And all the people that attention was on that thing got curious. They started whipping out their phones and they started to follow me. And I realized part of the purpose of my ministry was to distract the attention 
from out of the world system to God's heart. So they followed me to the man sitting in the wheelchair. There he is in the wheelchair. And they all followed me and they brought their kids in there. The Lord said, get all the kids and have them surround him and pray. And they said, God's going to heal this man's legs today. And they all surrounded him and the kids surrounded him. And they all ripped out their phones and I just started praying. And the kids were praying. And all of a sudden, one of the kids in the front jumps. And all the other kids got scared and jumped too. And I said, what's wrong? And they said, his, his leg popped. And I said, did it? And they said, yeah, it just popped. And, I, and as they said that, the man slowly, he had this crazed look in his eyes like he was shocked. He got up out of the chair real slow. And he just started walking. He just started walking. He walked right out into the water for the first time. Walked into the water. Do you see how close the will of God was to the distraction of man? And God's heart is here. Everybody's attention is here. God is looking for someone to stand in the gap and turn the hearts of the people towards his heart. That's part of the calling of this ministry is to turn the hearts of the people towards God's heart, what he's concerned about, what he wants to do. I'm on the beach. There were many different things. Some of them weren't all bad. Starting a mega church wasn't a bad idea. It was a good idea, but it wasn't God's idea. That was my idea. So there was the world's idea, there was my idea, and then there was God's idea. The world's idea and my idea had to die to give birth to God's idea. So I sat there on the beach and I chopped down trees, 10 acres of trees, the whole time. Do you know how long I was there? Eight hours. That's how committed I was to my idea. Do you know how long it took me to pray for that man? 10 minutes. The whole time I was there, all God wanted to do was make an appointment, and it was an appointment that he had with that man. Because after he walked off the beach, after he walked out of the chair and walked out onto the water, a woman out of nowhere comes running down the hill, screaming. And then she's, I mean, she's just about, just about rolling down the sandbank, running. I knew it. I knew it. Praise the Lord. I woke up this morning and the Lord told me, take him to the beach. Today is the day that he will walk and his legs will be healed. And she had been believing God for her husband. And God tapped on me to be a vessel. To make that appointment. And to bring... Somebody say, God's answer. Hallelujah. God is looking for someone to be his answer. To bring his answer. But watch this, that's not it. So then, there was the devil. There was Job. There was the devil, there was Job. And then there was people talking. Now these friends, they came... Uh, they came to comfort him. They were friends. They weren't enemies. Or they were friends. And their comfort looked and analyzed his situation and sought to understand what was happening to him. Okay? So then you've got the enemy dealing with Job. You've got his friends dealing with Job. And uh, the whole time, for 40 chapters, for 40, so I said 40 chapters, people talk. You know how many chapters it took for God to respond out of 40? Just one. 40 chapters of people talking, and none of it was what God was saying. And even what Job was saying wasn't what God was saying. The Lord gave me a revelation about the book of Job. 
Job was about promotion. Because Job was a wise man. He was a, a wise man in his day, which is why, you know, he, he had money. He had cattle. He had a, a nice family. He had it together. And he was a man of God. And he was a wise man. And his wisdom came from God. But the Lord told me, he said, Michael, I needed to shift my servant Job. So I allowed a test in his life. I allowed a test to break him to a place to see me in a greater way. So Job had wisdom. Watch this. Oh boy, thank you, Holy Spirit. I love how God does that because it's not in my mind. He puts it there. This kind of preaching isn't easy because you guys hear how I'm talking. I'm talking and I'm waiting to hear what God's saying. Okay. Job had wisdom, but he didn't have God's heart. He didn't have God's heart. So this test was to break him, to get him to see God's heart. And so God answered Job. And he came in and he, and he showed Job and he gave Job what Job needed to be God's representative before the people. Okay, so the people talked and God gave Job something. It was about promotion. Okay. God was wanting to deal with the land, and I won't go into detail, but this will be a whole new teaching. God wanted to deal with the land, and he wanted to deal with the people. So he was calling Job up higher. Watch this. So the enemy had influence on people, so God caused Job to confront the same enemy. The enemy that was affecting the land. Come on, I could go into some serious teaching here. It's not a coincidence that the spirit of Leviathan shows up in chapter 40. When God is ready to deal with a principality or a spirit, he looks for a person. He looks for his man, his woman. And how do they confront the spirit? God brings them up to the spirit. He brings the spirit before them. They confront the spirit. You see that? That's affecting the people. Leviathan was a lying demon. God came and he talked about his sovereignty. Basically, he was saying to Job, I'm in control. And he spent a whole chapter talking about Leviathan. The principality that God was raising Job up to deal with. So Job met that enemy. And that enemy tested Job's heart for the promotion that God was releasing over his life. All right. So, God said, when the enemy came, Job's life was afflicted. People talked. God answered. God answered. And Job dealt with the people. Okay. There's some people that God is sending you to. All right, we're going to close, I promise. All right, Job chapter 42, verse 7. This is what I want to say in closing. 
Hallelujah. God said to me this week, he said, wait on my answer. Wait on my answer. His answer is what's going to be your breakthrough. Not people's answer. Not your answer. Not even that pastor's answer. Come on. Not your mother's answer. Not your mentor's answer. Not the psychologist's answer. Come on. God said, wait for my answer. Hallelujah. Listen. I didn't say anything was wrong with those people. Okay? Sometimes you need that for the soul. But for the promise that God released over your life. For what God said he will do. Somebody say he'll do it. And when he does it. Oh boy. When he does it. You'll know that it was him that did it. In other words. Don't water down the promise. Hallelujah. Don't water down the promise. Uh -uh. Don't water down the promise that he gave you. He said that he'll do it. And he's going to do it the way he said that he'll do it. Nothing less, nothing more. Come on, somebody. Don't water down the promise. I'm speaking to somebody today. Somebody's watching online. He said that he'll do it. And he's going to do it exactly how he said that he's going to do it. Keep trusting him. I'm losing my voice. Yeah, mama, mama, send it in. Keep trusting him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Keep trusting him. Yeah. So nothing's wrong with those types of people. But they're only a means. Come on. And they're for your soul. But they're not for the spirit of what God said that He was going to do. It's important that you realize that because sometimes the soul wants resolved so bad that we're willing to settle for less. But what God said that He would do. The Bible says He'll give you more than what you ask for. Hallelujah! I hear the Holy Spirit. He says many people have fallen short of the fullness of the promise because they settle for less. And what I desire to do for you. Because they fainted in the weight. Because they fainted in the way. They fainted in the stand. I hear the Lord say, Hold on. So good. I hear the Lord say, Hold on to that promise. Because He's going to do it. When God answers, you'll know that it's Him. Because it's going to be something that you didn't plan. It's going to be something that somebody else can't do. Something that you didn't see coming. It's, it's going to happen in a way that you didn't anticipate it to happen. Come on. Stop trying to figure out how God's going to perform your miracle. When He answers, watch this. This is also what's going to happen when he answers, Job 42, 7. God said it. He'll do it exactly the way. Thank you, Jesus. Exactly the way that he said it. Nothing less. Yeah. Nothing less. More than you will 
ask more that you may ask or think, I will be thank you, Jesus. So the Lord of Mama Mama said to him, Job 42, verse 7, it says here. And so it was after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz and to the night, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right. My servant Job has. Job the to me had his heart right before the Lord. Job's hand was, God's hand was upon Job the whole time. And all this while, God is working the promotion. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, God revealed his voice and exposed every false voice that was around the situation. And it was there for 85 to 95 percent of the, the, the testing of Job was a false voice. God's voice came in the end. God's voice came in the beginning, and God's voice came in the end. Come on. But between the beginning and the end often is a test. Sometimes it's a test just of words, of people talking. But what God intends to do with the people talking, he wants to make what he's about to do in your life a testimony for the people that are talking, for the people that are watching. And some of them, they don't even have bad intentions. They just don't have God's answer. Because God holds his answer. You may be looking at plan B or plan A and plan B to try to figure out what to do. You don't know what to do in your situation. You've looked at plan A. Is it plan A or is it plan B? The devil has you fighting and wrestling over plan A and plan B. You have not yet considered that there's a plan C that you don't know that God's hand is upon. Usually it's plan C. That's the answer. In other words, God writes a whole new section of the test that wasn't there. You're struggling to try to figure out an answer upon what's in front of you. But what God wants to do is not in front of you because it's his answer. It's above all that you may ask or think nothing. No eye has seen, come on. No ear has heard what God has prepared for those that love him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you as we close out, Lord. We thank you. Let's just stand up and let's just stand up as we close. Father, we thank you, Lord. As we close out, we receive your answer, Lord. We, we come against anything that is less, Father. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for what you say. And you're going to do it as you said you would do it. And it's going to be nothing less than your best, Father. We thank you, Lord. And we press in for the greater. We press in for the more. Father, we stand on your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that your yes is still yes. Do it, Lord. We receive it in Jesus, our mighty name. Forgive us, Father, for if we have fainted in our heart, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, if we settle in any place. But we pray and we thank you, Lord. And we receive everything that you have for us. In Jesus, Almighty name, we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say, God is going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God is going to answer. God is going to answer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys online. Thank you for watching. What an awesome, awesome service. Thank you for hanging out with us as we're just being led by the Spirit. You heard it. God is going to answer. Keep moving on. Keep standing on what He said. Stay firm on His promise. The Word says that there is a great recompense of the Word for your confession of faith. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. It may be that God wants you to be an answer 
to that situation. You're looking for an answer for the situation. But you don't know that God has already placed it in you. That you are the very answer. That God is going to use you. That his spirit's going to flow through you to be the answer for that circumstance, for your own life, and for the lives of those looking on. God is setting you up. He's setting you up for a testimony. He wants to reveal himself to the world around you. Come on. It's a testimony of deliverance. It's a testimony of healing. Come on. God is going to answer. And that's the word that he's given me.